Okay guys, so we are just starting off from Proton COE with the Geely E5. I have two other media with me, Adam and Lixon. Maybe you can't see their faces because I put the camera to myself a bit selfish today. <laughs> but anyway, uh, all three of us are new in this car and all the controls are in Chinese. So I think the Malaysian version will have English lah, or Malay. And that is the equivalent of the high proton. I, I we, our Chinese guide uh, talked to the car just now, <laughs> and in Chinese, and the car could respond. But of course, there are also controls, lah. Anyway, guys, uh, this is a typical electric car. Now, this car is built by Geely, and they have their own battery uh, manufacturing. Now, this is their battery, I think. That's what they said, and uh, it's a new type of battery, and it's lighter. Okay, the thing about this vehicle is it's 1.6 tons. That, that's what I'm told. So if this EV is 1.6 tons, then I'm quite impressed because the weight is very good. Uh, 0 to 100 is in 6.75 seconds. We don't know what's the top speed, but with a single gear, I would say it'll be around uh, 170, 180. Uh, max lah, I would say maybe even 200. I don't know, but it's a single gear uh, Transmission and I'm of course waiting for the first of these Chinese vehicles to come with a two-speed gearbox Because the two-speed gearbox will actually extend your range and it will also give you a bit better fuel economy because it has an additional gear uh, and uh, And that also increase the top speed lah so it's already existing, it's not that it's not existing, the technology is there, it's just a question of whether it is cost efficient to do one or not. But I believe it will be, uh, the one the one car that I know that has a two-speed gearbox is the Porsche Taycan. Yes, and that's in the top version of the Taycan and the two-speed gearbox is something I'm waiting for. Uh, we don't know when it will come, but it will come. I remember there were cars ice cars uh, in the 50s they had three speed gearboxes then they had four speed gearboxes then in the 70s we had a five speed and nowadays we have up to 10 speeds as far as instrumentation is concerned there is an instrument uh, screen and then they have an infotainment screen i can't tell you the size this may be about 13 14 inches this one is about 9 or 10 inches but it's enough uh, Funny impression if you can see the, the steering. It always seems to be this steering is upside down. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, so the interior is as the show car in Frankfurt. It's in kind of like off-white, but I think for Malaysia it might be a different color because this color is going to be difficult to keep clean, especially the upholstery. Yeah. Okay, you have your standard buttons. And I do not touch anyone because it's all in Chinese. Okay, I touched a button just now, the sunroof wanted to open and I had my camera uh, attached to the sunroof. So, some quick reflexes saved the day. <laughs> okay, door handle controls are okay. Uh, it's not... In terms of interior, I would say this interior is quite okay. Lah. It's not funky like some of them. You know, no guitar strings. <laughs> for sure uh, so it's quite mature looking and quite steadfast I would say the there's a center console that looks pretty good wireless charger here and the aircon is okay lah it took a while to warm up panoramic sunroof and the rest of it is like that I think it has full ADAS I'm not sure but this car has covered 2,926 kilometers. Yeah, gear shift lever on the stick here, like the Mercedes. And uh, so to me, this is quite okay. Lah. Signal on the left and right. Signal is on the left. Headlights, where the headlight controls? Ah, that one got problem. I can't find. Ah, headlight control also on the left stop. Other than that, okay. Lah. I think they've done quite a good job. I don't know where they saved the weight from to give it 1.6 tons. The glass itself is quite the glass itself is quite heavy. So 
I haven't had a chance to look at where they do the weight saving, but I'm sure uh, it will be in things like the door panels, the boot uh, lid, you know, and bonnet. Those type of materials they will be using some composites, I think, to save weight. Well, it's a good move. Okay, this is a left hand drive car, remember. You're driving on the wrong side of the road. I got Adam here who will be my touch and go cut <laughs> holder. Okay, so 6.75 seconds 0 to 100 is uh, moderate by EV standard, but actually quite fast by ICE car standards. Lah. So I would say 6.75. Uh, the Golf R has a 0 to 100 of about, say 6.2 or 3 close to this last so you get the equivalent of a 300 horsepower car type of acceleration okay so signal light signal is on the left stock and we're trying to catch up to the Okay, so we are heading. Oh, they're going to take us to the Guthrie Highway and come back. Yeah, so we are exiting at Sea Field, but there's a lot of traffic. Okay, uh, steering uh, controls are mechanical, yeah, to adjust the height and rig, and also uh, reach and rig and the seat is electrical control for the driver for height rig and everything and i understand there is a massage function for the co-driver he adam says he cannot find the height adjustment but he's got this aeroplane seat then uh, the ankle rest can go out and you can recline and re really be like a tauke lah. they have managed to get 430 kilometers for the short range battery that's a 50 kilowatt hour battery and 530 range for the 60 kilowatt hour battery so you notice the batteries are a little bit smaller now uh, compared to the early EVs they're getting smaller that's because they are getting more range and that also contributes to the weight of the car uh, having a smaller battery means you can afford or rather you will reduce the weight of the car itself and also by controlling the acceleration or rather uh, yes controlling the rate of acceleration by making it go a little bit slower that means it can also extend the range so it's basically the the reduction ratio uh, of the sun and pinion gears that they are using yeah uh, there is a planetary drive there and so by, by varying that ratio they or rather running a taller ratio they can they reduce the acceleration rate but uh, also by doing that they can increase the driving range so what type of people would likely find this car good Okay, so the from what I know of the design of this car, they do have a lot of space, so it has a large boot, and uh, then they have hidden compartments and storage compartments all over the place, and then uh, it's front wheel drive, good ground clearance, 19 inch wheels, so handling should be good. Yeah, if I remember correctly, it is a multi-link. Uh, suspension at the back and uh, looks like McPherson struts in the front yeah so what type of people will find this car useful well early adopters law and of course uh, nowadays with so many Chinese cars coming and all of them have a c-segment SUV you'll be spoiled for choice so you can pick what car you want depending on your need and on the price Alright guys, we're going to check out the car. You can drive a little bit fast, <laughs> but there's traffic. Okay. So the ride is on the 
soft side of comfortable yeah that's how i describe it i think for malaysian road a little bit stiffer suspension would be useful but remember guys this is a geely yeah so when it comes to malaysian spec the proton people will have their input so perhaps we will get slightly firmer suspension yeah so chinese made cars tend to be a bit on the soft side because that is what i would say is their local preference lah. so everybody in the car here agrees that oh, you see it's it's uh everybody here agrees that it needs a little bit stiffening up yeah uh, we are going at 110 106 yeah this is the nominal speed that most people would be driving their evs lah, and it feels okay the suspension still a bit <laughs> on the soft side yeah but other than that okay lah. in terms of noise is good yeah in terms of acceleration the response to throttle is good Okay guys, so that's the end of my session of the driving. Thank you very much.